I'm supposed to be filming a different video at the moment, but I am feeling inclined to close out this one. And I have been having a very difficult time closing out this video, so the fact that I have even just an ounce of willingness, I think, to do it means that I am I'm going to. I made some notes. Hazel is drinking water. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, I've tried to film this three different times, and every time that I have, it's just felt wrong. And I just, I don't know if it's ever going to feel right. My stomach just keeps twisting up in knots, and I don't feel like I have the right words to say, but I also don't really think that there are words for this. So we're just gonna try. I started working on this video over two months ago now, and a lot has changed since then. I cannot bring myself to post the video as it is. I am having the most impossible time closing it out, and so I think that I'm just going to have to do it a little bit differently and walk you through everything um, in a way. As I was about to film the closing portions of this video, um, I received a call with the terrible news that a very close family member of mine had died very suddenly and tragically. As I'm sure you can understand and imagine, I've taken some time to process or attempt to process that. And I've been trying to get back into making videos lately, but it's been difficult and I feel like I need to talk about this and make it known to be able to continue creating. I talked about it a little bit on my Instagram, I posted just to let people know, but it's just horrific. I'm having the most difficult time closing out this video, I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to talk about this, and I, I just need it to be done. It feels impossible to post the majority of this video, which is so happy and good and just close it out on this horrible note. But I need to, so here we are. This video began in December and it started out very positively. The stalker problems that I was having had been much better and I was getting back into the rhythm of life. Here I have some elderberries, alcohol for infusing, and some honey. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo for kisses. So it's been a couple of days since I posted my last video here, and I have been wildly overwhelmed by the comments. You all have been so sweet and wonderful, and I don't even really have the words for it. Things have been feeling a lot better lately. Nothing else has happened and uh, I've been starting to get back into the regular rhythm of life. Um, because of that, I figured that today it would be time to finally do the project I've been wanting to do for months, but just haven't been able to find the time or have put it off for really no reason at all, but I have managed to get sick. I am about to hang out with a lot of people, and this means that it is time to make some elderberry syrup. So today I'm going to start the long infusion. This involves making a tincture and a infused honey and so I'm just going to take you along with me on the beginning stages of this. So after learning my lesson after previous tincture making experiments, I decided that this time I was going to pre-measure the alcohol that I'm using. I'm using Everclear which is a 190 proof alcohol but you can use something as low as 80 proof. I tend to recommend 100 proof to 120 proof for tincture making. The higher, the better, depending on the herb, of course, but for the most part, uh, it just is better at extracting. And then other than that, I just have a cup of honey. Any old honey will do, and you just need 
one part to one part of each. Since each of these are one cup, I'll be adding one cup of the elderberries to each of these guys. tincture that is beginning to infuse a bit and our infused honey that I will start by flipping upside down. Both of these are going to get put away in the cabinet and I will be checking on them periodically. I will be letting these infuse for probably four weeks. I usually like to let them go for six weeks but because it's winter and I would like to be using them a little sooner than six weeks time I'm going to do a shorter infusion. The tincture can be used a little bit quicker than that, but I would like to make the full elderberry syrup. So once these are done infusing, I will strain them and then make a decoction with more elderberries. I am running very low, I need to get a few more, and then put it all together. Elderberry syrup is really good for boosting the immune system and helping you get over colds a little bit quicker. I absolutely adore it and tend to try to have it on hand for the entirety of the winter time. Oh, and a quick note, because I don't think I explained it earlier. When you're making a tincture in a mason jar, it can be really beneficial to put a bit of parchment paper between the lid and the jar just to protect the lid from the alcohol. But anyways, I'm gonna tuck these away, check on them, give them a shake every now and again every couple days. And then I'm gonna clean up and get ready to head up to the cabin for the winter solstice. Haven't been there since everything went down, so it'll be nice to see it again. As I speak to you now, the elderberry tincture and honey are ready to begin working with. And I will be finishing that up probably in the next video here, but I can't bring myself to work on that right now. Um, I don't know why. I think I'm watching back this video and talking about the projects I started and even just thinking about all of these projects. It just, it feels very trivial and difficult. I've been having a really hard time working on things that I either started or can see when he was still alive. And I don't know why, I guess, if I'm going to guess, I think it's because it feels like closing that door a little too much and making it all very real and final. Not that finishing a recipe is the difference between life and death, but logic doesn't really seem to penetrate through all of the feelings, does it?
all of these moments and all of these moments in this video that they feel so trivial now, but at the time they were a big deal to me and it's it's just very hard to process at all. I was I was at the time finally feeling safe enough to leave my home and excited and happy enough to begin working on things that I had been wanting to work on. And that had opened the door to so much, so much adventure and also just in general a lot of peace. I dried these bits of citrus a couple weeks ago, uh, both for a general practice and to put on my Christmas tree. I just took down my tree last night and I decided that they were too beautiful to get rid of, so I think I'm gonna string them up and hang them all around here, but I don't quite have time to do that today. I am about to leave on a little trip just for the weekend to see some friends and then uh, on the day that I get back, the evening I get back, and I get back in the evening, uh, my brother and one of my closest friends from home are flying in to uh, spend some time with me. So things are very busy and I'm trying to get everything put together. It has been a wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully busy and beautiful time these last couple of weeks. I haven't been able to spend a lot of time filming. I've spent all of the holiday days with friends and it's just been so beautiful and wonderful. I've said these words too many times, but I hope that gets the point across. Things have been a lot brighter lately and I've just been very grateful for that. And it's in perfect time as the solstice happened and the days are getting at least a little tiny tiny bit brighter. I typically find January to be one of the harder months of winter just because it is still so dark, but so far I haven't really felt that way and it's been good. So it is time to look forward. I think one of the harder pieces for me is how right before everything happened my life became very full with friends and family, which I am so grateful for. It was so beautiful and bright and happy and it meant so much to me to see my brother and to see my best friend growing up. It was really valuable and, and great time spent. but. I just, it's hard to watch and share now. And now here I have to try to figure out how this video ends. And I don't know how to do it cleanly. This is the thing that I've struggled with the most. Nothing feels right. I'm at a loss for words and I just don't know what to do. Life really does throw a lot of curveballs, but this is one that I could never have imagined or prepared myself for. It is so outside of the realm of possibility. The family member I lost was my cousin, who was more like a little brother to me than a cousin. We grew up together. He 
spent time under my immediate family's roof. He went on trips with us and was a constant presence in my entire life. I mean, genuinely, he is introduced to new people as technically my cousin, but more my little brother. And three weeks and one day ago at the time of me filming this, he was killed in a work accident at 19. He was working in the logging industry. It is a dangerous job, but it just is so impossible and it is so beyond devastating. I have felt so hollow and it has just broken my family into so many pieces. And I have a very big and very loving family and I'm very grateful that I was able to go home and spend time with them. But he was the brightest light. I mean, you could not have ever met anyone who was brighter or more wonderful and it is so... It is so impossible to imagine that he's not here anymore and that I don't get to see him and that none of us get to see him. And it is a loss that is going to hurt forever. And I just have had the most impossible time trying to go forward because it just it doesn't feel like there can be a, an after but here I am it's been three weeks and one day and I don't know if it will ever be real but I need to work on working and living and the first step I think is this I like to share a lot of the beautiful things in life here. That is my, um, that is my priority usually. It is to share the beautiful, but life isn't always very beautiful. And when it's not, I try to find some silver linings, but I don't, I don't think that there is in this. It is simply too horrific, too tragic, and so painful. There is nothing about it that makes sense or makes it okay, so I can't, I can't end this positively and I don't want to. This is something that I've needed to talk about and it's just horrible and I'm, I'm sorry to any of you who've experienced this. It is just too much. I won't continue to talk about it, at least probably not very often if I ever do talk about it again, but I share my life here and this is a huge, huge thing that has happened in my life and I needed to talk about it before I could move on. I don't think there's any way for me to close this out well, I, I just can't, so. I think this is this is what I have to say to share with you. Um, I do want to ask that you don't ask too many questions. I don't really want to talk about it any more than this. But this is what I have, and um, I guess to close it out, I'll show you the elderberry ingredients. Let's do that. So here is the honey. It is very well absorbed let's see i don't know if it'll show you but it's very very dark with the elderberries and same with the tincture i will be finalizing the syrup in the next video and uh for now i'm gonna leave you all here with this so thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon